The Tundra's in the shop today for some preventative maintenance and it's due for a transfer case fluid change. That job is pretty simple. You just need a ratchet and the proper fluid to get the job done right. So it's even simpler than a regular engine oil change. So in today's episode of Tool Demos, I'll show you everything that you need and how to do it right. Stick around, we start right now. I'm just gonna look inside this maintenance guide to see what the intervals are for this transfer case. At 60,000 miles, and under special conditions like driving on dirt roads, it says replace that transfer case oil. Or if you're towing, using a car carrier, or have it heavily loaded, also transfer case oil is recommended. Otherwise, Toyota doesn't recommend it, although I still would. Moving right along now, I've done the oil change, so it's time to come back just a little further and hit that transfer case. Now you can see I've got jack stands up in the front and the rear and that's because when you're doing that fluid level check you want to make sure that the vehicle is level. So I've got enough room to go under there. Let's get on the creeper and get started. All right you're with me here on the creeper. Be careful we don't hit the pan it's already under there. Let's go under the car. Let's look right at the back of the transmission. There's the transfer case, and Toyota was kind enough to mark that drain plug for us. And we go right up here, and we've got a fill plug. So both of these are a 3 8 pipe plug. Now I don't actually have a 3 8 pipe plug socket. I've got the 10 millimeter for the oil filter. So what I'm going to use today is just a 3 8 extension uh, and go right in there and you can see it fits just fine. Right before I use that extension, I'm just gonna use the regular ratchet to crack these loose. And I'm doing the fill plug first for two reasons. Number one, I wanna make sure that I can get this out so that it's not too late. If I can't fill this back up and it's already been drained, I'm up a creek. So I can turn this, we're good there. I'm gonna stop and leave it right there for now and I can crack loose this drain plug. Both of these have pipe thread, so you don't want to reinstall these too tightly. Another reason to loosen this fill plug is so air can come in as we're draining and it'll drain smoothly and not gulping. Before I take this off, I can see that we've got this little skid plate here. Now there's a hole under the skid plate. I don't know if you can see that, it looks like it's probably going to drain out of there and make a bit of a mess. So I've got my shop rag handy. Let's go ahead and drain this thing. There we go. Let's smooth that out and give it some air. And that came out darn fast. So we're actually spilling out from the top and the bottom hole. Uh, that's interesting. This is the fill plug. It's clean and it's not magnetized. Here's the drain plug. Also no magnet. I kind of expected there would be one, but there isn't. So let's go back up top and see about these threads. All right, we've got this fill plug. I can tell because it's cleaner. And here's the drain plug. Look real closely at those threads. This is a pipe thread, so it's tapered and the threads are actually what seals it from leaking. On those threads is a thread sealant. I'm gonna clean off this old sealant and replace it with new stuff. Just use a wire brush and brush that off. You can also use a wire wheel if you're careful not to hit yourself. Quick spray. Those threads look great. All right, these are both really clean and dry now, so it's ready for the thread sealant. I'm gonna do them one at a time because this stuff is messy. This is the new thread sealant that I'm gonna be using. It's from Permatex. It's got that PTFE. It's just a white sealant. It's got a brush inside here. 
This is the extension I'm going to install the plug with. So I'm going to hold on to that and that'll keep my fingers away from these threads. All right, so those threads look to be pretty evenly covered, but the top of this drain plug is clean. It's not gonna get any of that stuff inside the transfer case. I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna leave it on this extension so I don't get this stuff everywhere. Now let's go under the car to make sure that that thing is done draining and we can put in this drain plug and fill it up. All right, looks pretty good. I'm just gonna give it one final treatment of this brake clean to make sure it's good and clean and dry here. This stuff evaporates pretty quickly, so I'm not worried about getting any of that in there. I didn't spray too much in there. It's not going to be a problem. I did do a little bit of a trick here. When I was first under here draining this, the rear of the vehicle was down slightly so it could drain out more. And now that I'm ready to fill it, I've lifted it back up, which did two things for me. It stopped it from dripping out and I can get these threads dry. Also, it's gonna be level so I can get the fluid level just where it needs to be. All right, here is the drain plug. Those threads are sealed and ready to go. Now, I haven't touched them with my fingers, so it's ready to go. I'm gonna use this extension to put it in there just like that. And we're going to get a good seal and not make a mess. Now pipe thread is not my favorite way to seal something. It's pretty difficult to know when to stop tightening it. If you go too far, this tapered plug could crack this case. And if you don't go far enough, it'll, it'll leak. So you gotta get it just right, but that thread sealant's gonna help out a lot. Just gonna use the ratchet. Get that out there. It wasn't on that tight to begin with, and it's not going to be when I'm done with it. Just kind of, you can feel it getting tighter and tighter as you go, but it's never going to stop. Like I said, if you go too far, it'll crack that case. So it's not like a regular bolt. You just kind of have to have a feel for when you want it to stop up and that feels about right where I want it. So let's go ahead and fill this thing and then we can put in the fill plug. All right, let's check the owner's manual to see what Toyota recommends for this transfer case. It's not WS, it's LF and 75 weight. So genuine Toyota or equivalent. So we can go aftermarket on this one. And that's what I did. I went to Amazon and I picked up some of this Ravenol made in Germany. It's MTF3 and here's all of the specifications that it meets, including this one, 08885-81001. That's the Toyota part number for that fluid. So if you want to pick up some of this on Amazon, I'll leave the link to that page down in the description. Take a look at the top. It's kind of a two-step process. They want you to lift these little handles here. So let's do that and give it a twist. Oh, there we go. Pull up on it a bit. I'm just gonna grab down here. There we go, pull that up. Hold that, twist this. There we go. Pretty cool little invention. Let me take this top off here. There we go. So now we've got a spout to pour all of this fluid in with. Pretty ingenious. I don't have to use my drill pump or anything. Let's go back under the car. So here's the first bottle. This should go completely in there because we're going to use about a quart and a half. I really like the way this bottle is designed. It's leaking a little because I was a little rough with it when I first pulled that spout out of there. That's my fault. 
but it shouldn't leak as I'm filling here. I'm just kind of squeezing the bottle to get that stuff in there. Now my drain pan is underneath this fill because we're going to know when we're done filling when we see it leak out of the fill hole. So that is pretty much it for this bottle. Let's get the other one and finish it off. That was the first bottle I opened. So this is the one I opened on camera. It's a lot cleaner. I had to practice a bit, just uh, be a little bit more gentle with it than I was and it won't leak. You can see that this one is plenty clean. So I'm gonna go a little slower here because we're only gonna use about half of this bottle. And then watch down here, we're gonna start seeing it drip when it's full. And then I know when to stop. There we go. It's draining right down into my drain pan. I'm gonna get this out carefully, try not to spill too much. So now it's just dripping very slowly. This is gonna keep dripping for a while. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna jack up the rear of the vehicle just to get it to stop dripping. That way I can get these threads clean and dry and they'll seal with that new sealant on that fill plug. It's not gonna change my level any. It's just gonna get this job to go a little bit faster. Okay, I know that's cheating, but sometimes cheating is good. We've got other things to do other than watch this thing drip. Now I'm just gonna spritz it down here with some brake clean. Make sure all of that is clean. I'm not spraying inside the transfer case. Just kind of around it. Then I'll use my shop rag to clean out those threads and the transfer case on the outside. All right, back again, I've got a fill plug with fresh sealant on there. I'm gonna very carefully put that in there. My hands are shaking a bit because just after lunchtime, so I'm gonna go and grab me a bite as soon as I'm done with this guy here. And it looks pretty dry and good to me, so that's good. This is a great time to check it now that we're full. Make sure that there's no leaks coming out of here. This is the time to stop that. You don't want to run this thing dry. All right, just got my ratchet here. Looks like I may have put a little bit more sealant on this fill plug compared to that drain plug. That's okay. It's just going to work its way out just a bit here but it'll seal up just fine. I'm being careful and slow. Like I said, these pipe plugs are a little scary to me. You gotta make sure that they're tight enough, but not too tight. And I like that there. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. I'm not gonna try and clean this up or anything. That'll dry uh, in about 24 hours, so no big deal there. I like it, it looks pretty good. Let's get this truck back on the ground and we can go for a test drive. Well, this transfer case is good to go now for another 60,000 miles. I've got a few more jobs left to do on my checklist before I can take this out on a test drive. So if you want to see what those jobs are, I've put them all into a Tundra maintenance playlist and you can see all of those how-to videos there. Until next time, thanks for watching. To stay up to date on future videos just like this one, click here and click over here to start binge watching tool demos. I won't judge.